رَبِّي شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي عَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْأُقْدَةَ مِنْ لِسَانِ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي السلام علیکم ایوریبرنی ایم ویلکم تو رمضان ویڈ جڈین ٹوڈے ایز دی ففٹینت و رمضان این ہوپی و رمضان ایز گوئنگ ہلدی ویلدی این وائز این ایوریبرنی ایز ہیونگ اگریٹ ٹائم سو ٹوڈے ویر گوئنگ تو بی سٹارٹنگ ویڈ سور سبا ویچ ایز دی تھرٹی فورت سور آف دی قرآن ایڈ ایز امکی سورا این ایڈ ایز 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 ای what it has in store for us. <coughs> so, Aouzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Bismillahi Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Alladhi Lahu Ma Fis Samawati Wa Ma Fil Ard Wa Lahu Alhamdu Fil Akhira Wa Huwa Al Hakim Al Khabir All praises to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala To whom belongs whatever is in the kingdom And to him will be all the praise in the day of, here, in the day of judgment In the hereafter and he is the most wise and he is the most aware. Now this surah it starts with the words Alhamdulillah. It comes in some surah. So this is again a surah which has a pair. It is a pair of surahs, Surah Fatir and Surah Sabah. Now these both surahs they start with the uh, words Alhamdulillah. Now the last time we saw this was in Surah Al-Kahf, Alhamdulillah. Then we saw it before in Surah Al-Araf. So it keeps coming. So first of all it was in Surah Al-Araf, Alhamdulillah. First of all, Surah Fatiha. Surah Fatiha, the first surah of the Quran, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Then Surah Al-Araf, Alhamdulillah. Then after that, we go ahead. Surah Kahf, which is the 18th surah of the Quran. Over there it also comes, Alhamdulillahi Lazi. So again, now after this in Surah Sabah, it comes, Alhamdulillahi Lazi lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. And after this comes again in Surah Fatir, which is the surah after this. Do check it out if you have missed it. Now, the second verse. This is a verse that is actually come in Surah Hadid. And it is basically, except for the end part, till fiha, the verse is actually come in Surah Al-Hadid too. So the verse is, يَعْلَمُ مَا يَلِجُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا وَمَا يَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا يَعْلُجُ فِيهَا وَهُوَ الرَّحِيمُ الْغَفُورِ He knows what goes into the earth and what comes from the earth. He knows what comes below from the heaven and what goes up to the heaven. And indeed, He is the most merciful and the most forgiving. So these are the two, three verses again, which start with the exalting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَعْتِينَ السَّاعَةِ قُلْ بَلَا وَرَبِّي لَتَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ And those people who disbelieve, they say that indeed the hour will not come to us. <coughs> That's the hour of the day of uh, Qiyamah. And then you have to say that indeed it will come to you. Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about the unseen. لَا يَعْزُبُ عَنُهُمْ إِثْقَالُ ذَرَّةٍ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَلَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا أَصْغَرُ مِن ذَلِكُ وَلَا أَكْبَرُ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ And not even the weight of an atom or a small ant which is مِسْقَالُ ذَرَّةٍ Now it is not only saying to just a particle that we can see. It is even some things that are indivisible like atoms or we cannot even see by the human eye. So that cannot escape from his knowledge in the heavens and the earth. Basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about everything in the heavens and the earth. And indeed everything is in a clear, is in clear proof. It's Allah al-Mahfuz. لَا يَجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِزْكٌ كَرِيمٌ over here, لِيَجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ So that he may recompense those people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who do good deeds. أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ To them is forgiveness. وَرِزْكُنْ كَرِيمٌ And a very generous provision which is paradise. Then after that, وَالَّذِينَ سَعُوا فِي آيَاتِنَا مُعَاجِزِينَ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ عَزَابٌ مِنْ رِزْزٍ أَلِيمٌ But those who strive against the proofs, the evidences, the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to them is a very painful torment. Then after that, the sixth verse, وَيَرَى الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ الَّذِي أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ هُوَ الْحَقَّ وَيَحْدِي إِلَى صِرَاطِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ And you have been given the knowledge, what has been revealed to you and those who are before you, basically the knowledge of the prophethood that was not only revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after that. Uh, before him, they were like other scriptures revealed to like the Torah, the Injil, the Zubur, which were revealed to different prophets. So this is what is being told over here. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he guides people to the right path. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفُرُوا هَلْ نَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ يُنَبِّئُكُمْ إِذَا مُزِّكْتُمْ كُلَّ مُمَزَّكٍ إِنَّكُمْ لَفِي خَلْقٍ جَدِيدٍ And then those who disbelieve, they say, Shall we guide you to a person, they say it and mock, Shall we guide you to a person who tells you that when you will die, when you become into dust, fully disintegrate, you will be created again, you will be resurrected. Then after that, أَفْتَرَ عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا أَمْ بِهِ جِنَّةٍ بَلِ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ فِي الْعَذَابِ وَالْضَلَالِ الْبَعِيدِ 
and indeed has he invited has he invented a lie against Allah subhanahu wa taala or did any madness in him? No. But those who disbelieve, they are going to be in a torment in the hereafter, and they are going to be in a really far error. Now, أَفَلَمْ يَرَوْا إِلَى مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Don't they see what is behind of them in the heaven and the earth again about the you know signs of Allah subhanahu wa taala? We talked about this in Surah Yasin about how those people who are going to be on the day of judgment who did not obey the signs of Allah subhanahu wa taala, they are going to be blindfolded and behind them there will be the evidences of all the qom which Allah subhanahu wa taala destroyed and shown that those people who disbelieve what happened to them, awalam yasiru fil ardi. Don't to travel in the earth. For you, Zuru kai fakar aaki batul lazina min kabilum kabilim, and you see the uh, what happened to those people who were before them, and then on the ahead of them will be the signs of Allah subhanahu wa taala. What has been given to them? In nasha naqsi bihimul arda wa nuski taalaim ki sabab min al-sama. In na pidali kala ayatan li kulli abd munib. If we would have built, we would have sink them. In the earth, you know, the earth would have swallowed them, or we would have made a piece of the sky drop on them. Now, what does piece of the sky mean? Now, there was like I, I remember that I used to listen about a story called, uh, you know, the sky is falling. There was some story about a squirrel who used to think that the sky used to fall, even though it was a nut. So I think there was like basically, you can see the sky is falling means that a cloud. I think it's a cloud because you know the cloud it has a lot of weight too. and it is kind of the perfect match you know a cloud it does fall and then after that you know when they see it's in surah tur 2 that in surah tur it is said that when they see a piece of the sky falling they say it's a cloud so that is more proof to indicating that what this means over here kisafa min as-samai it means about the clouds walaqad atayna daud min nafadla now in these surahs we have seen that the mention of daud alayhi salam and sulaiman alayhi salam has come quite a lot of times not only in this surah In Surah Sad, Surah Safat, these mentions have come. Well, قد أتينا دعوة من نفدلا يا جبال أوبي بما هو الطير وألنا له الهديد. And indeed, we bestowed our grace upon the Uda Alayhi Salam. Indeed, it is said to him, O you mountains, glorify Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala with him and the birds too. And we made iron soft in his hands. So basically, the whenever he used to recite these abur, his voice was so beautiful that the mountains and the birds they also started. chanting with him and then he was given this power that he could like whenever the iron started coming he just in his hand it just started to melt and he could just bend it the way you know people make it so he could make different things ani amal sabighatin wa qaddir fi sardi wa amalu salih inna inni bima ta'maluna basir then it was said make perfect coats of chain mail chain mail is basically like you know the medieval armor you know the chains which protected people from getting the swords in there and balance the rings very well so chain mail is basically like it was made out of you know iron at those time and it was like the armor for the people who used to fight chain mail so it was like basically chains but it protected against sword so it could weigh up to 2 to 3 pounds but now this this chain mail it was made so light that it was actually pretty light on the person whenever they used to wear it it was not like 10 15 pounds of chain mail ولسليمان الريح غضوها شهر ورواها شهر واصلنا له عين القطر ومن الجن من يامل بين يديه باذن ربي ومن يزق منهم ان امرنا نزقه من عذاب السعير and indeed we gave to sulaiman the stride of the wind which was from the morning which was a month's time and the evening which was a month's time basically the stride of the wind wind patterns we gave him to him and we made for him a mountain of brass asalna lahu ayn al qitr that is basically a mountain of you know like for example a volcano mini volcano from which brass used to flow and molten molten brass and then after that the jinn they used to do different things for him and whoever whatever of the jinn who did not listen they used to be punished يعملون له ما يشاء من محارب وتماثيل وجفار كالجواب وقدور الراسية املوا على داود الشكر وقليلا من عباد الشكور now over here it is said again وقليل من عباد الشكور there are very few my slaves who are grateful very few people who actually do shukr now again they used to do whatever he he built like for example they designed rooms they used to place images they used to have basins which were large reservoirs for either water or something and they used to do the cooking so basically it was said to, to sulaiman alayhi salam you give thanks to allah subhanahu wa taala and enjoy the benefits falamma qadayna alayhi almauta ma dallahu ala mautihi illa dabbatul ardi takulu min sa'ata and when the time of his death came nobody noticed he, that he was dead except for that small worm which was chewing at his stick 
فلما خرت بيانات الجن ولو كانوا يعلمون الغيب ما لبثوا في العذاب المهين so when he fell down then the jinn saw that if they would have seen the unseen that he was dead they would have not stayed in the torment now over here basically when sulaiman al islam actually died nobody knew because he was actually standing on a stick so the jinns they used to keep doing their work but then the worm you know the worm which chews on wood it it's called there is actually specific name to it so the wood worm yeah the wood worm so it keep you know like chewing on the worm, the wood so what happened was that finally when the wood was all eaten he then fell down so the termites and the wood worm they used to chew on a stick then after this there comes the verse laqad kana li sab'in fi maskanihim aya jannatani ay yamini wa shimal kulu mir rizqi rabbikum wa shkuru la baldatun tayyibatun wa rabbun ghafur so indeed we put to saba and the people of saba a sign in their dwelling place two gardens on the right hand and two on the left and it was said to them uh, two gardens one were on the right and one were on the left it was said to them eat from the provision and be grateful to allah subhanahu wa taala you have a fair land which is all away from any war and you have a great forgiving lord so basically the qom of saba was some sun worshippers and sulaiman al islam he the queen of saba he he finally made the queen of saba accept islam but after her death after that then these people they started disbelieving again now the people of saba they used to enjoy a trade monopoly basically the trades that used to come from like for example europe all right those trades which used to come from europe and the roman empire they of course at that time there was no suez canal all right so because there was no suez canal they couldn't pass to the red sea so then they had to pass through the land and the caravans they used to come from the north and they used to pass through saba because it was in the middle or it was in hijaz it was in the middle of hijaz and then those which were coming from the south like from the east from the east african peninsula or from the you know more more south there on the south east side of asia since those trade routes they also used to come and they had to also pass through the desert so this is why the trade monopoly was there when saba all the caravans used to pass from there which really gave them a lot of profit and was really economical boost for them then but but of course after that they were not really obedient they did not really listen so fa aradu fa arsalna alayhim sail al armi wa badallahum bi jannatayhim jannatayn dawatay ukulin khanti wa aslin wa shay'in min khidrin qalil but then they turned away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we sent so we sent against them sail al arim which are the flood released from the dam they used to be the dam which used to actually irrigate those two gardens which were basically like for example there was like a road and on both of the sides there were lush gardens so the dam actually broke and because of the flood all the you know everything was destroyed so zalika jazaynahum bima kafaru wa hal najazi illa al kafur this is how we gave the disbelievers what they were justified to be given and this is how we gave them this is this is how we give everybody who does that وجعلنا بينهم وبين القرى التي باركنا فيها قرى ظاهرة وقدرنا فيها السير سيروا فيها ليالي وايام عابين and we placed between those towns we had blessed them a great journey a safe journey now over here they used to you know basically there were a lot of stops when they used to go through so they were safe from any theft any robbery because after like 20 40 miles they used to come one town then after that 20 miles another town 20 miles another town so there was no fear of any thefts because it was inhabited land now in surah al quraish this is being the same thing said to quraish li ila fi quraish ila fihim al ikhrat al shitai was saif they kept good in the winter cold and in the you know Uh, hotness of the summer then after that ilafim rihlat ashita wa saif wal ya'budu rabba haza al bait so let them accept the uh, so let them accept this lord of this house basically allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allazi ta'amahum min ju'in he has saved them from hunger wa amanahum min khawf basically the same thing over here but then they said فقالوا ربنا بعيد بين اسفارنا وظلموا انفسهم فجعلناهم احاديث ومزقناهم كل ممزق ان في ذلك لايه لكل صبار شكور so then they said that oh lord extend the stages so we can have a thrill we can have excitement that somebody might come upon us so make this thrill for us but then they wrong themselves so we made them stories in the land and we dispersed them everybody was dispersed so the some of them went south some of them went to yathrib <coughs> which were the trau which were the tribes of aus and khazraj these were the actually real real arabs who used to live that they the aboriginal arabs the aboriginal arabs so these were the those people 
now indigenous but the people of Quraysh they were actually descended from Ibrahim al Islam who came from the Levant and the Levant is not a part of Arab which is basically Palestine slash Israel then after that we have Syria Iraq all these places they are not actually like we can't really consider them two Arab areas because they are in the Levant and the Levant is an area which is near the Mediterranean Sea so those people they have a different a different dialect of Arabic even if you go over there today so they actually used to be quite different from the Arabic area so this is why the Quraysh they were not like total true Arab so these true Arabs were those who were in the Yasrib area Aus and Khajraj who were descended from Sabah so then وَلَقَدْ صَدَّقَ عَلَيْهِمْ إِبْلِيسُ ظَنَّهُ فَاتَّبَعُوهُ إِلَّا فَرِيقًا مِّنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ and indeed Iblis had justified his word upon them by sending every one of them astray وَمَا كَانَ لَهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِّنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا لِنَعْلَمَ مَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِالْآخِرَ مِمَّنْ هُوَ مِنْهَا فِي شَكْ وَرَبُّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَفِيزٍ and Shaitan had no authority over them except that we might test him those people who disbelieve are in the doubt of you know in the hereafter and indeed they got the punishment that they needed then after that قُلِ ذُعُ الَّذِينَ زَعَمْتُمْ مِن دُورِ اللَّهِ call those people who you associate besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لَا يَمْلِكُونَ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَلَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا لَهُمْ فِيهِمَا مِن شِرْكِ وَمَا لَهُ مِنْهُمْ مِن زَهِيرِ they do not have the weight of any atom nor any small ant in any of the areas of the heavens and the earth just like it was said a few surahs before that they don't even have the assertion over even a dead stone then after this وَلَا تَنْفَعُ الشَّفَاتُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا لِمَنْ أَذِنَ لَهُ حَتَّى إِذَا فُزِّيَ عَنْ قُلُوبِهِمْ قَالُوا مَاذَا قَالَ رَبُّكُمْ قَالُوا الْحَقِّ but the intercession with those people you know who they say is not is not acceptable at all it will not help them except those who Allah SWT permits except when the fear has gone they will say what has your Lord given they will say the truth you know the angels will say when it will be asked to them and indeed he is the biggest he is the most great قُلْ مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ قُلِ اللَّهِ وَإِنَّا أَوْ إِيَّاكُمْ لَعَلَى هُدًا أَوْ فِي ظَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ Now say to those people who disbelieve, who gives you provision from the heavens and the earth, say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but indeed those people are not rightly guided and they are in a plain error. قُلْ لَا تُسَعْلُونَ عَمَّا أَجْرَمْنَا وَلَا نُسْأَلُ أَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ And say to those people, you will not be asked about your, you will not be asked about our sins. Basically, it will be said that you people are accusing us, alright? So, who are you people to judge about us? You, you do whatever you want. Because on that day you will be recompensed for what you used to do. So even if you don't want to believe, then don't believe. But on that day which you torment, which you used to hasten, it will gonna come to you. قُلْ يَجْمَعُ بَيْنَنَا رَبُّنَا سُمَّ يَفْتَهُ بَيْنَنَا بِالْحَقِّ وَهُوَ الْفَتَّاهُ الْعَلِيمُ Say indeed our Lord will assemble everybody of you on the day of Qiyama and He will judge for the truth. Indeed He is the most trustworthy and He is the all-knowing. So this is where we will stop for Surah Sabah. Tomorrow inshallah we will do the remainder of the Surah. I hope everybody has fun decoding the verses of Surah Sabah. I hope everybody will have a great Ramadan after this as this is the halfway point of Ramadan. So I hope everybody will have a great Ramadan after this and a blessed Ramadan and the Rahmas and Barakas of this month and the next 11 months to come. رَبَّنَا أَتْمِمْنَنَا نُورُنَا وَكْفِرْ لَنَا إِنَّكَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنٍ قَدِيرٍ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.